Welcome, my friends, to my small laboratory. In today's lesson, we will learn about the properties of matter. Are you ready? Great! Let's begin! Here we have a variety of materials. A glass ball, a rock, and some clay. I will prepare an empty cup and fill it with water. Now look at what I'm going to do. I will place this small glass ball here. Notice, the water level inside the cup rose. So we can infer that the glass ball displaced some of the water, and that is what we call size. Size, my friends, is a property of matter, and it is the amount of space that a body occupies. The size of the glass ball is the same as the amount of water that rose. In the beginning, the water level was here, and when we place the glass ball inside the cup, it rose to here. So this extra amount of water at the top represents the size of the glass ball. Great! Now I will get another cup and fill it with the same amount of water, but this time I'll put a rock inside it. Notice how much water is displaced. Hmm, can you figure out which of these materials, the rock or the glass ball, is bigger in size? Great job, my friends! Because the rock displaced more water than the glass ball, this means that the size of the rock is larger than the size of the glass ball. Great work! So, my friends, the first property of matter is size. Now, let us learn about the second property together. We'll need a balance scale, a glass ball, and clay. I'll take some clay and mold it into a ball and place it on one side of the scale. And on the other side of the scale, I will place the glass ball. Notice, my friends, that the side of the scale with the glass ball fell lower, while the side of the scale with the clay ball was raised higher. Because the balance scale is used to measure mass, we can infer that the mass of the clay ball is smaller than the mass of the glass ball. So, mass is a property of matter. However, what would happen if I added more clay to the clay ball? Notice that now the two sides of the scale are the same, which means that the mass of the clay ball is equal to the mass of the glass ball. What if I added even more clay to the clay ball? Look! The clay ball's mass is now larger than the glass ball's mass. Hmm. This means that there is a relationship between the amount and mass of an object. When the amount is small, the mass is small. And when the amount is increased, the mass is also increased. So when the amount of a material increases, its mass gets larger. So, we can conclude that the mass is the amount of matter in a body. So, my friends, the properties of matter are size and mass. Great job! Now, I need your help. Here we have a few materials, a balloon filled with air, and a coin. Which of these is larger in size? Great! That's correct! The balloon has a larger size than the coin. I wonder, is the balloon's mass larger than the coin's mass? How can we find that out? Correct! We will use the balance scale. We will place the balloon here, and the coin here. What do you notice? Great! The mass of the coin is larger than the mass of the balloon. Hmm, so, while the balloon is larger in size, it has a smaller mass. And while the coin is smaller in size, it has the larger mass. So it is not necessary that a large material has a large mass. And now, my friends, look at what we have here. A ball filled with air and a flat ball. 
we will measure the mass of each one using the balance scale. Notice, the mass of the ball filled with air is larger than the mass of the empty ball. Hmm, but wait a minute. This is the same ball. So what caused the change in mass? Great, that's correct. The air inside this ball is the reason. Air, as we know, is matter, and whenever there is more matter, the mass is larger. Here we have a larger amount of air, so the mass will be larger as well. So, we can infer that air is matter and has mass. Good work! We find that we can figure the size of matter by looking at it, like the coin and balloon. The one with the larger shape is also the one with the larger size. We can also find the size by placing the matter in a cup filled with water, as we have done before, with the glass ball and rock. The one with the most water displaced is larger. While mass is measured using a balance scale, like the glass ball and the clay ball, and likewise the coin and the balloon. Together we learned about the properties of matter, size and mass, the meaning of size, the meaning of mass, the relationship between the mass and the amount of matter, how to measure mass and size, air is matter and has mass.